Hi, I'm Dennis. And in this video, I will show you how I made this T-Rex skeleton using the Shapeoko CNC router, with the bones made out of 40 different pieces of black walnut and the teeth and nails out of glow-in-the-dark epoxy resin. Mmm, yeah, it's cute, but I think the Shapeoko can do better than this. Let's see if we can make a more realistic version with this machine. I found an accurate 3D model of a T-Rex designed for 3D printing on Thingiverse.com that I downloaded, but had to modify all the components for two-sided CNC routing, which I did with Mesh Mixer. I also made it bigger, but since bow blanks are the largest pieces of affordable wood with maximum dimensions of 12 by 12 and up to 3 inch thick, I had to divide the skeleton into 42 separate pieces. The tail into 4 individual segments, a left and right side version of the femurs, tibias, feet, scapulas and the arms with the hands, as well as the 11 pairs of ribs. I had to divide some parts even further into left and right halves if they were thicker than 3 inch, like the skull, the jaw, neck, the front and aft dorsal vertebrae, ilium and pubis. I plan to make the teeth and nails out of epoxy resin with pearl white and glow in the dark mica powder, so I need to separate those parts from the bones. The nails of the hands and feet were rather straightforward, but the teeth required more work as they were fused together with what looked like plaque which is to be expected, because it's difficult to floss if you have such short arms. I spread out all the teeth in order and marked the right side. And then did the same for the nails of the hands and feet. I imported these as STL files in VCarve to create the toolpaths and combined left and right sides if these would fit on the stock for a total of 29 different jobs. So that is the theory. Any questions? All right, enough talk. Let's get started. While I'm waiting for the walnut wood to be delivered, I'll make the spoil boards and cut the molds for the teeth and the nails. I cut a board of MDF to 600 by 600 millimeters and drilled holes that match the clamping holes in the CNC bag. I used only the corner holes to secure the spoil board onto the CNC bed. This surface should be big enough for all the carves. I'll make the molds out of MDF. Half an inch is thick enough for the teeth, but I will need one inch for the nails. So I'm going to cut this board in half and then glue the two pieces together. I'll let it dry overnight, and in the meantime I'll carve the mold for the teeth. I clamped the stock onto the spoil board, inserted the roughing bit, installed the dust shoe and carved the pocket for the epoxy fill, which I finished off with a downcut bit. The following day I repeated the steps to carve the mold for the nails. I'm going to fill the molds with epoxy resin and add some pearl white mica powder to give the teeth a shiny white color. I'll also add some glow in the dark powder for special effects. I poured part B and then added the more viscous part A. Mixed it well, then added a few scoops of pearl white as well as glow in the dark powder. Mixed again and poured the epoxy into the mold for the teeth and the nails. It will take the epoxy several days to fully harden. After two days, the epoxy is hard enough for the dentist and a manicure. I first drilled the dowel holes into the spoil board and then used router bits for precise positioning of the stock. I chose a 1 8 spiral O flute bit for the roughing pass for optimal chip clearance of the epoxy and then performed the finishing pass with a 1 8 ball nose bit. I flipped the stock upside down 
and repeated the process for the other side. The O-flute had no problem pushing through the thin layer of MDF, clearing the majority of the material for the finishing pass. At the age of 65 million years, I think this T-Rex can use a denture. And then I did the same for the nails. Since there are so many pieces and they all look very similar, I'll leave the nails and the teeth in the stock as a reference to where they go until I have carved the components to which they attach. The first batch of wood has arrived. Since those dinosaur skeletons you see in museums are always dark brown, I opted for black walnut to carve the bones. I'll start with the skull. I used the bandsaw to cut the stock to size, and the planer to give each piece the right thickness, and then clamp the stock onto the spoil board. My experience with such thick stock is that the sawdust clogs up deep narrow grooves. And since these extra long router bits are only spiraled at the very tip, the sawdust does not get cleared from these grooves and pushes against the shaft. This prevents the bit from traveling all the way into the corners, making the belt slip and then everything gets ruined. So I'll try to clear as much stock material around the 3D shape before I start the roughing pass. I first drilled the dowel holes with the standard 3 inch long bit. Even with the Z gantry at the maximum height, these extra long bits won't fit between the router and the stock surface. So I had to move the router to a higher position in the Z gantry clamp. I could then run the stock clearance pass with that extra long 4 inch end mill, followed by the roughing pass of the outside of the right side skull using the same bit. I swapped the end mill for an extra long ball nose bit to do the finishing pass. I cut a quarter inch dowel in half and made the dowel holes in the stock deep enough that about 4mm sticks out. These protruding stops will go into the dowel holes that I'll drill into the spoil board. I used a downcut bit for the dowel holes in the spoil board, as an upcut bit would create ruffled edges that would prevent the stock from getting flush with the spoil board. I then flipped the stock upside down with the dowels inserted into the dowel holes for perfect alignment with the CNC zero coordinates. After that, I used the 4 inch end mill for the roughing and the 4 inch ball nose bit for the finishing passes. After about 9 hours of carving, the right side of the skull is done. So now I can do the left side and all the other components. The left side of the skull was basically a mirrored copy. And the same for the right and left sides of the jaw. All the individual pieces of the skull are now finished. So while the CNC is working on the other components of the skeleton, I will cut the tabs, do some manual cleanup, assemble the right and left halves and attach the teeth. I cut the tabs with the saw, sanded down the stubs with the Dremel and used a file for areas that were difficult to reach. I then covered both sides with regular wood glue, clamped the halves together and let it dry overnight. While the glue was drying, the right side of the ilium was completed. I sanded the glue lines and joined the right and left halves of the jaw. The following day, the left side of the ilium was finished and the jaw had dried so I could glue it in place. After cutting both halves of the ilium out of the stock and sanding down the tabs, I also glued these together. By the time that glue had dried too, the left and right femur bones were done. I used a thin file to cut out the teeth. I dropped it. Where did it go? Ah, found it. I shaped the base so that it would match the contour of the skull and glued it in place with translucent glue. I was careful not to drop the second tooth, glued it next to the first and repeated the process for the other teeth. And that is number 28, done with the upper teeth. I'll let it dry upside down like this overnight and glue the teeth to the lower jaw tomorrow. 
In the meantime, the left and right tibia bones were done. Gluing the lower teeth was basically the same. Then the scapulas were completed. Hi there, what seems to be the issue? <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. Open your mouth please. Oh yeah, well there's your problem. Do you eat a lot of candy? Well, I'm sorry, but that sweet tooth needs to come out. <laughs> And then the feet were finished. I will wait with gluing on the nails of the toes until after assembling the legs, so that I know the exact position and angle of the feet. After the hands were done, I cut out the nails, glued them onto the fingers and clamped them in a vertical position to let gravity hold them in place while the glue was drying. These are the four segments of the tail. These are the two segments of the dorsal vertebrae. And these are the left and right side of the neck. Now that the number of bones is starting to pile up, I realize how big this thing is going to be. And gluing all the components together would make it a bit difficult to handle. So I'm going to separate the skeleton into three pieces. A head, mid and tail section, which I will assemble separately. I bought a few heavy duty flush mount brackets, which I attached to the ilium by cutting a shallow pocket with a dremel, so that the bracket with the hook pointing upwards was flush with the wood surface, and onto the tailpiece with the hook pointing downwards. I hope this is going to hold the weight. I did the same for the front side with the dorsal vertebrae. Carving all the ribs from 1 inch boards went much faster than the other components from 3 inch thick stock. The sixth rib is so curved that the overall shape is thicker than one inch, which means that I cannot carve it from this one inch thick board like the other ribs. Therefore, I will carve it from the same stock material as the left and right side of the pubis, which is two inch thick. In the meantime, I attached the dorsal vertebrae segments to each other. I drilled a pilot hole, which I widened to one quarter inch to fit a dowel. and glued both segments together. I had prepared the connection of the head before gluing the neck onto the dorsal vertebrae, as gluing the head would be easier after installing the ribs. And also connected the four segments of the tail. Only two more CNC jobs to go. This is the last piece of bone segments. So after one month of CNC routing every day from sunrise to sunset, I can finally finish the assembly. You hear that? It's so quiet! I shaped the base of the ribs so that they would fit into the holes in the dorsal vertebrae at the right angle and then glued them in.
to do the other side the next day. I had designed the pubis hash with a groove so that when combined they form a tunnel of 90 millimeters in diameter which fits a 3 quarter inch pipe that will become part of the supporting scaffold. After gluing both halves together I attached the pubis to the ilium. By that time, all the ribs had dried. So I could attach the head to the neck. And also glued the feet to the tibias. Now that all the components along the spine are assembled, I can determine the height of the pubis to cut the support strap to length and then position the legs so that the feet touch the ground. I bought a pipe shelf bracket, which I will screw onto the scaffold and then slide in the support strut. So I need to cut this to length as well. I shaped the tip to match the curve of the pubis. With everything in place, I could also mark the positioning of the scapulas and arms. I kept the design of the scaffold very simple. I just cut the corners at a shallow angle Sanded it all to a smooth finish. I screwed on the pipe bracket. I had marked the touch points of the scapulas to the ribs and used super glue gel to attach these, as both were too thin for dowels, so I had to hold them in place by hand until dry. To create a more dynamic pose, the right leg would be pointing to the back. In this position, the foot was high enough that the nails would not touch the scaffold. The left leg would be pointing forwards, so that the toes were on top of the scaffold. A few hammer strokes drove the dowel all the way in. I then cut the nails out of the mold and glued them onto the toes of the left foot. I did the same for the right foot that I had clamped onto the sawhorse. The next day I attached the right leg 
and let all the glue completely cure for another day before varnishing. I opted for a matte finish for a more realistic bone texture. So that's it. It may not be as big as the real monster, but at least a bit more realistic than a plywood version. Thank you for watching.